Before we run App Inventor, check that your Java is up to date. And we can look at About Java. And the current version is version 7 update 51. So here is the current version of Java installed. Make sure that your Windows is up to date. And if we go to updates, and I need to install these updates before I start. So with Java updated and Windows updated. Right, it's in the process, so um, we'll come back to that in a moment. Start with the App Inventor page at MIT and scroll down. Find out what's happening with App Inventor 1 or App Inventor Classic and ignore the button here to start inventing your own apps. We've got to set up the page first and we need this link at the bottom to supporting materials and documentation. On this next page we want to set up and here we've got the stages in setting up so first of all prepare your system make sure it's got the correct version of Java installed and it gives us a test here and it's giving us this notepad file let's see if it'll start and run it So this shows we've got Java 7 installed and we're waiting for Notepad to run. We've got to give it permission. And here we've got Notepad. Right, so that confirms that we've got the working Java in the system. Now we've got to go and install the App Inventor software. Set up instructions for Mac, Linux and Windows. We want the instructions for Windows. We've got to download the installer. and it'll take a little bit to download so if I just come back to that when that is completed and it gives me a list of previous projects I was working on I can start a new project no blanks project test system My project test system, um, I can drag items, test button, I'm going to go to not ready for prime time 
and add a web viewer. And in this web viewer, I'm going to put a link. And I'm going to give it the full FTP colon slash slash. Right, put the BBC website in there. And I'll save it. I'm now going to open the blocks editor. And again, we've got this JNLP file, which I want to open it with the Web Start Launcher. It's downloaded. Java is launching it. So we just wait for that. We just have to be patient here. Run it. And here we've got the blocks editor. Now we'll just check that this is working. Um, let's go to control. And we drag them onto the screen. Um, they click together if they fit. And you hear an audible click. Right, so that's working. I'm not going to bother creating a program. I'm going to go straight to the emulator to make sure that is working. Before we can connect to the device we need to have an emulator. And note this, starting the emulator, please be patient. Here's the emulator starting, but we can't connect to it until it's fully running. And as it runs the different parts of the emulator, we will see messages appearing on the screen. Again, we just have to be patient. You can still see messages appearing at the top, preparing the SD card. Yes. We may need to unlock it by dragging that across. And then that looks like the picture here, so it looks as though we're ready to run. So if we go, we can click on that to OK that on that to bring the emulator back into view. Connect to device. Here's the emulator. And now we've got to wait until this icon turns green to show that it's connected. Bring it back to the front of the screen.
Again, we have to be patient. This changing icon tells us that there are processes going on. And we can see changes taking place in the emulator. There is our text for button 1. But for some reason, we haven't got our web viewer showing. So what did we do wrong? Right, we'll leave that connected. And we want to go... Let's bring that down. A few more. Visible. Let's put in the www. Save. Go back to the emulator. Click on the screen. And there's the BBC's website designed for mobile units. Right, so we've confirmed that all steps in the process work. And we're now ready to do some tutorials.